Hi guys, the Metal Maniac back again, and um, <clears throat> this is what the third video of this day uh, today now. Um, this video I'm going to be reviewing um, another Iron Maiden album, Peace of Mind. I'm trying to get these reviews out, these Iron Maiden reviews out pretty quickly, um, so I could hurry up and do a ranking because I'm really looking forward to that video, the ranking video. I rank all the albums. Um, anyway, this album, Peace of Mind, was released in 1983. And um, at this point, Clive Burr was uh, outed from the band and replaced with Nico McBrain, who is, I wouldn't say as good as Clive Burr, but he's still really, really good. Um... This is uh, also, this um, formed the classic 80s lineup. Of course, that being Nick, Nick McBrain on drums, um, Steve Harris on bass, uh, Adrian Smith and Dave Murray on guitar, and of course, Bruce Dickinson on vocals. Um, <clears throat> the artwork for this album is... I my second least favorite of their 80s albums. Uh, and this is not one of my favorite Eddies either. Yeah, I have an action figure of a uh, Peace of Mind Eddie on my shelf over there in the other side of my room. But that's just because I uh, wanted want someday to complete the collection of NECA Eddie action figures. Anyway, um, the... There's the inside, um, there's um, Iron Maiden all sitting around a dinner table, eating Eddie's brain. And you can see the brain here on the disc. Um, there's the back. Oh yeah, and something I want to mention is the fact that certain album artworks, especially a lot of, a lot of them in the 80s, uh, Iron Maiden ones, uh, certain ones were... A bigger picture than they actually are on the actual front, so that's why some of them continue on the back. Like for example, um, some of them are just the front, like just the main picture, nothing more to it. But some of them uh, are a bigger picture that they couldn't fit all of it on the front, because um, they're bigger, like lengthwise, like that way, not that way. Well, sometimes that way, but more of that way. Like, uh, if you, uh, take this and put it like that, you can see it's all one picture that couldn't be fitted onto just the front of the album. So it's like that. Also, this is the original version of the artwork. Uh, the, uh, 98 and I think the early 2000 re-releases, um, had a green sort of tint to the front, to the, uh, lighting. For some bizarre reason, uh, which is the version, <clears throat> which is the version on the poster, but you can't see it that well on the camera. It looks like it's the brown version, but it's not. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know why they changed it. Why they just changed a minute detail that doesn't make any sense. Like, I mean. The brown kind of makes sense, considering it looks like the padded cell is actually brown, and the light's just regular light just uh, shining in from the doorway. Whereas the green light makes no sense. Like, seriously, like, they changed, like I said, they changed it green for a while, and which makes no sense, because the walls are brown and the light is just bright white, so why? I don't know, but I have a little sort of gripe against that version of the artwork. Um, but yeah, uh, the singles on the album were, uh, Flight of Icarus, uh, The Trooper, of course, and you can see part of it on the poster over there, um, eh, I'm not gonna move my computer, um, cause I have nothing else to put it on, uh, other than this box, I have no cable in my room, so I don't know where I'm gonna put the computer otherwise, um, yeah, so Flight of Icarus uh, was the first single, I think. Uh, the Trooper was the second. And, 
I believe there, Sun and Steel was a single, but I'm not entirely sure. Maybe it was where Eagles Dare. I'm not sure. I But I know that two of the singles were, um, of course, The Trooper and um, Flight of Icarus. The Flight of Icarus one, I think I like a little bit more than The Trooper. I know that's kind of sacrilegious to say, but... I mean, artwork-wise, though, not song-wise, but artwork-wise. Um, anyway, let's get into the songs. First up is Where Eagles Dare, and honestly, I never really appreciated this song until I saw them play it live at the Legacy of the Beast Tour. I know I'm talking about that tour a lot during these reviews, but it's like the only... It was the first ever like metal show I ever saw. Um, so, they'll have very fond memories of it. Um, but yeah, they played this, uh, uh, at the Legacy of the Beast tour, I think it was their, yeah, it was, it was the first song that they played, and, uh, that's when I, like, was like, oh, this is actually a good song, like, I don't, I still don't really like the studio version that much, but the live version is really, really good. Um, Revelations, I've always liked the live version better. Um, I don't remember if they played this during the tour I went to. I don't think so. I might, I might, my memory might be failing, but I don't think they did. But I have seen live performances of it online, and yeah, the live version is a lot better. This was a, one of those songs on their albums that was meant to be live. Like, I don't hate the studio version. I actually, I actually do really enjoy it, but I just like the live version a bit more. Um, because... I really like the live version. It's like every time, like the the um, the part where it goes da 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 da, like the the crowd goes wild, like da 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 yeah da 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 yeah. I always like the crowd interaction on that one. Um, let's see, Flight of Icarus. This one is I yeah it is it is it's the shortest song off the album, but it's really really good and. For years, Steve Harris refused to play that song live. Like, I think, the, like, after this tour, I think they only played it, I believe, at for the um, World, Slavery, uh, World Slavery Tour in 84, 85, and then they quit playing it for a long, long time until they brought it back with the Legacy of the Beast tour, and, ah. Uh, I love it. They uh, brought out like um, when, when they first started the song, they brought out this like this giant, like an inflatable Icarus, like is, with its wings spread out. Oh, that was awesome. Uh, and then of course Bruce Dickinson running around with double flamethrowers, just shooting them off randomly. And oh my god, that was me. <laughs> I love that. Um, but yeah, Flight of Icarus, an amazing song, both studio wise and live wise. I, I love it. Um, Die With Your Boots On was a song I always have hated. It's very cheesy and in a bad and cringy way. I don't know how this ended up on the album. It's not the worst song on the album, but it's close. It's just... I don't know. It's just bad. Um, here we go. The Trooper. My favorite Iron Maiden song of all time. As you can tell, I have a poster... Um, in one of the videos, I was wearing the Trooper shirt. Today I'm not, I'm wearing the... It's a collage of different Eddies. But, um... Yeah, it's really great. One of my favorite versions of Eddie, um, uh, with the artwork. Um, I have the action figure up on the shelf over there somewhere. On the other side of my room, anyway. Um, but, um... Yeah, great song. Uh... The music video to it's okay... Um, not the best. Like, I... Certain music videos of Iron Man's, especially with the earlier stuff, I don't really like all that much. Uh, because it's just basically... I mean, the band playing live, you see footage of them live, that's fine. But then they add, um... Uh, clips of, like, old movies. Which... I, I always thought was kind of lazy, like... Instead of, like, putting, like, something you, they've made themselves, like, not really a whole movie, but, like, anything other than just reused clips of, like, old movies. Like, I mean, it's fine for certain certain music videos for certain songs, but with certain other ones, it's just kind of like, really? Really? I mean, with the two minutes to midnight 
thing, a uh, music video from their Power Slave album. They actually created a whole, like, live thing. Like, they, like, are actually, like, filmed, like, a bunch of stuff. Like, this guy and this Illuminati-type organization and stuff like that. It's just, some of these older stuff, some of the older music videos are kind of lazy. Like, song-wise, they're good, but visual-wise, they're just kind of really. <laughs> but, yeah. Overall, The Trooper's an amazing song, one of their best, and my all-time favorite Iron Maiden song. Um, and then, uh, Still Life, which is an absolutely underrated song. Like, I don't think they've played this live since, um, Made, Made in England 88, uh, when they were promoting their, uh, Seven Sun album. Um... But yeah, it's an amazing song. It's one of their slowest songs, or at least parts of it is. But I really, really love it. And of course, there's the one part in there where it's like, we'll give you peace of mind. So it's their reference to the title. And yeah, even though there's no song called Peace of Mind, at least they still say peace of mind in a song. Um, I love the premise of it, how it's just basically a guy who is going insane, seeing all these images, seeing all these, like, visions in this, uh, um, pond, or a, or a, or a lake, and, um, he's seeing spirits in the water, just, like, um, me mesmerized by it, like, he, they, they're luring him in, but it's, it's kind of, like, um, sort of, like, hinted at that they're not actually there, he's just sort of in his mind, they're there, but he's just hallucinating because he's insane, or like he's slowly going insane over time. And then at the end of the song, where he apparently he drags his girlfriend in, and they both drown. Um, but yeah, it's overall it's a great and underrated song. Um, like, cause it's like I assume it's his girlfriend, because it's like it's not me. They just it's not just me. They want you to, and I just assume it might be his lover. Be just I don't know. It fits. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, great song. Next up is the worst song on the album and one of the worst Iron Maiden songs of all time, Quest for Fire. Why? Why do they feel the need to put this song on an album? Like, it's, I guess it would be fine as a B-side of a single. Just a little fun, just, like, throwaway thing. But to put it on an album, it's just, like, there's so many other things you could have made to put on this album. Like... It's just dumb. I don't know. Anyway, uh, Sun and Steel. I again with uh, like with the uh, Where Eagles Dare. I didn't really like the song at first. I thought it was too cheesy. But I've I, I've grown to like it. It's really really good. Um, <clears throat> nothing much to say about it, other than I like it. Uh, to Tame a Land. Um, this one is one that I originally liked, but now I just don't care for anymore. It, it was good at first, but now it's just like, uh, whatever. Um, but yeah, overall, great album. I'd say it's, mm, I wouldn't say it's their best of their uh, 80s albums. But I'd say it's 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 really really good. Um, I'd give this mm, I'd say a seven out of ten. Like I said, um, if they just didn't have Quest for Fire on here, either have put something else on here or nothing else at all and just left Quest of Fire off, it would have been a better album. And uh, to Tame a Land, I think maybe they could have another thing. I think they could have put something else on instead. But overall. Pretty good album. Um, definitely better than a lot of stuff that would come later on. Uh, so yeah, that's my review of Peace of Mind by Art Maiden. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video.